And let's show some love for Sister Cheryl. Amen. And then we have Evangelist Valerie. Amen. So we just came to praise God today. Amen. Will you guys praise God with us on today? And some of the, we don't, we don't really, we don't have a band, so we playing to some tracks, y'all. But that's okay. If you could just clap your hands, bob your head, and pat your feet, that's praising God. Amen. So if you don't know the song, all you got to do is clap your hands, pat your feet, and bob your head, and you will still be praising God. Amen. 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 This is Amen. a song that uh, we love this song. We're just going to get your blood boiling Amen. on this one. Amen. Who got the Holy Ghost? Amen. How many of you love Jesus? I love Jesus? Come on, if you love Jesus. Put those hands together. Come on. He's my savior when the storms are raging. He's my shelter. And I will, will you follow him where he leads? I love Jesus. He loves me. Come on, let's sing it again. I love Jesus. He's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. Cause I love Jesus. Come on, if you love Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. I love the Lord. How many of you love the Lord today? I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. He has been so. Come on, you know the song. Help us sing. I love the Lord. Come on, let's hear it again. He's been so good. So good. So good. Been so good. He's been so good. So good. How many can say so he's good? good. So, so good. good. So good. Been so, so good. Hallelujah. Me. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, bless that wonderful name of Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name. I come on and bless his name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. He's been so good. How many of you know that there's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. Of Jesus. There is power in the name. How many of you know there's power in that name? In the song says, Come on, say Jesus. No other name, no other name on the heaven can. No other name but Jesus. Come on and sing. No other name. Jesus, say Jesus. Demons, demons tremble when you say Jesus. Jesus. Come on and say. Jesus. Say his name. No other name. How many of you got him? Do you got him? Yes, I got him. Everlasting life. Yes, I got it. Anybody got everlasting life? Anybody got the Holy Ghost? Come on and give God some. 
some praise. Yes, sir, God. Never like you ought to be glad about it. Yes, sir, God. Never like you can't be mad and glad. All right, Pastor. <laughs> yes, sir, I got it. Everlasting life. Yes, I all right. Everlasting night. Everlasting life. Come on, if you got it, say you got it. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. How many of you got everlasting life? The only way you can have it, you got to say Jesus. Everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life. Say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, come on and call on Jesus. him. In the morning, call his Jesus. name. At midnight, call his Jesus. name. You got to call him. Jesus. He'll be there when you need him. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus, he'll be there in the morning. Jesus. He'll be Woo. there at night. He'll be in the midnight hour. Whenever you need him, he'll be right there. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Call on his name. Somebody call on that name. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Woo. Wow. Woo. Hallelujah. You know whether you know it or not, this is a love walk. And if you ain't got love in your heart, ask God to help you. Because this is the love theory. And it goes like this. Here we go. How can it be that you love the most unlovable part of me? Of me, how can you see? Good morning, how are you? Your life was the only gift. Leave it by heaven to be free. Okay, I'll send it out there. It's amazing. Okay, amazing with you. You win even if you lose. Five minutes. Come on, let's sing it. Here we go. He saved the day. He saved the day. He will come through. He won't doubt that's not for super. He won't bear no greater love makes my heart beat. All I want to do is make you bright because I don't want to love nobody. Come on, everybody, help us with this part. Do you? I don't want to love. We singing this to God. How can it be? How can it be? Every one of my secrets, be here of in my five secrets minutes. that you keep. A mystery. I'm gonna let you watch my what what's all A over mystery. The table? Your patience. What is all that? Patience with me, God what will never that? leave. Don't ever leave. Help me to see. See like you. No matter what I go through. Is it everything's water? working for the good. What? Because he'll save the day. He'll save the day. He will come through. Okay, there's he no bugs be- in here. He won't fail that sauce. How many know God is a superhero? No greater love makes my heart beat. All I want to do, I want to make you proud. I don't want to love. Want to love me? Come on, help us with this far. Body but you. Come on, we don't want to love. Because when you love God, you're going to love that person sitting next to you. You're going to forgive somebody. You're going to forgive yourself. And then you're going to serve God. Hallelujah. Here we go. Loving you. Loving you. Hallelujah. Will be the death. When you love God, you lose yourself. Thank him. Give him That's how it's for. That's how it's supposed to be. More of you. It would be nice. Less of me. Come on, help us with this part. Please. He'll be gone. And Come on, let's let God know that we want to love him. Drop the Taco Bell and leave, so go say hi. Come okay? on, sing it from your heart. I don't want to love you. Oh, because when you love God, you can sing this part. He says a day. He will come through. He won't fail. That's not what superheroes do. No greater love. Hallelujah. All I want to, how many of you want to make God proud? He saves the day. He will come through. 
Ghost. He won't die, that's not for super. No greater love makes my heart beat. Hallelujah. All I want to do is make you proud. I don't want to love nobody. Because if you love God, you learn how to love yourself. And then you learn how to love the person next to you. How many of you know God created love? He's the only one that can teach you how to love. I don't want to love nobody. Love nobody. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. It is something so beautiful about loving God. Amen. I say we're looking for love in all the wrong places. Amen. If you want to find real love and true love, love God. And wait, he will love you back. He already loves you. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand praise. Amen. By the time, Amen. We, by the time we figure out we love God, Ooh. we find out he's been loving us all along. Oh. Amen. Oh. Amen. I love God. Hallelujah. You see, we working hard, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, my sister. She said, as usual. Amen. We're going to slow it down. We know you guys are not as young as we are. So we got to slow it down. <laughs> where, where are my singers at? Where are the children at? Where's the kids at? Hallelujah. Children. How many of you know that victory belongs to Jesus? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. We're going to wait until the kids come. Amen. And plus, I was, that was the wrong song, y'all. <laughs> We got another song to let you know that when you serve God, your name is victory. Amen. How many know your name is victory? It's in the Bible. You better find it and know who you really are. I got evidence. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. We need a little help. I got evidence. I got confidence. I'm a conqueror. I know that. Victorious, I got evidence. I got con. Any conquerors in the house? Con. How many of you know that you win? I know who I am. I know who I am. You got to know who God made you to be, not who the devil tells you you are. For me, for me, can you say, Oh, oh. people are in the house. Everybody should raise your hand. Oh, 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 my name, my name is Victor. And then this is what we got in Jesus. God gave me authority to conquer the enemy. He wrote in my destiny that my name is Victory. He said I've all overcome. I know I already won. He wrote in my destiny that my name, hallelujah, can you see, oh, oh, no, who I am. God wrote it in his plan. authority to conquer the enemy he wrote in my destiny that my name is victory he said I've overcome I know I've already won he wrote in my destiny 
that my name is Victory. Hallelujah, Lord. I know who you got to know who you are in Christ. God wrote it in this plan for me. Can you say, oh, oh. Come on, I want to hear you say it. Here we go. My name is Victory. Come on, I need to hear you say it. You got to get it in your spirit. Oh, oh. Kind of get into it, put your soul into it. Victory, I know, I know my identity. My name, my name. Come on, I can't hear you. Victory, I know. I Come on, you can kind of rock through this one. Pastor swaying side to side. <laughs> Victory, I know, I know. Do you know? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, pray. Hallelujah! Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm tired. Now we need the kid. Come on. Oh, yeah. We had a choir of children, and this is one of the songs that we yeah. sung. Hallelujah. And the song just reminds us who Come can up, stand girl. against the Lord. No one can. And no one we who can stay, who can stand against the king. She's so tall, she almost as tall as me now. <laughs> can remember there's the words right there. Can you say oh oh let's rock? Whoa, victory belong, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs. Oh oh oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. The song says, who can stand against the Lord? Stay, who can stand against the Lord? No one, no one can, no one will. Who can stand against the King? Who can stand against the king? No one, no one can. No one, no one will. Can you say, oh, 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 victory? Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory. 
Dewey belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory, victory belongs to Jim. Victory, victory belongs to him. Oh, oh, oh. So we put our hope in him. So we put our trust in you. We put our hope in you. And we put our, how many you know, because he's a deliverer. Hallelujah. You're a deliverer. You're a provider. You're a provider. I find my victory. I find my victory in forever. Victorious, forever victorious, forever we win, forever we win. I find my victory, victory. If you are delivered, you're a deal, you're a provider. I find my victory, I find my victory. It forever victorious, forever. Cause victory belongs, victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him, victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him, victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him, victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him. How many of you ready for victory? In order to be victorious, you got to have a close walk with God. Hallelujah. He's pouring the blessings. He's not throwing them. Because victory belongs. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Come on. In your spirit, victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 the Bible says, out of the mouths of babes. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. In order to be victorious, you got to walk close. Hallelujah. Come on, let's Hallelujah. give the Lord a hand praise. Offering time. Offering time. We'll come back with the last song. Offering time. We got a special offering song for you today mm. you don't sing first before? do you do you want to sing your song first I, I you always fill my heart with song of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you trust I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. songs of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you I will trust in you 
This is where we need your help. There is nothing to hunt for God. Nothing to hunt for God. Power be. Come on and get your dance on. Come on. I see Pastor, he's still rocking. <laughs> Charlie just stood up. Power belongs to God. I see you standing up and giving God some praise. Man, where the men at? I see you, Sister Rosalind. Brother Mark is getting his praise on. Power belongs to God. teach you how to forgive. There is nothing. Come on and sing it like you mean it. Power belongs to God. There is nothing. How many of you know God is the power? Nothing to offer God. So when the devil come knocking, you tell him there's nothing to offer God. Sister Geraldine, Sister Cheryl, Sister Valerie, thank you all so much. All right. You know, everybody needs a break every now and then, right? You got to take off, go do it, uh, got to see who it is that you got to go see. It's just one of those things. This week is going to be a good week because uh, we were, we were going to probably have Gary come up and give the message, but I, I wanted to give him another week to rest, you know, to get him to make sure that he's feeling good and up to it. So we'll probably be having Gary come and give the message next week. But this week we're going to be talking about the name of this sermon, which is called You Must Walk the Talk. You Must Walk the Talk. Amen? And this is an important thing because, you know, a, a lot of us, a lot of people, especially out here, let me tell you something, the people walking up and down the streets here that don't go to church, don't think that they ain't been in the Word. Somebody, their mamas or somebody, has taught them the Word something, has given them some kind of biblical education as time has gone on. So they know the difference. But you know, it, it, one of the things I hate, don't have a pipe in your hand, with a rock and start telling me about Jesus. <laughs> Don't tell me what Jesus is all. Can you see it? You know, you know, Jesus, Jesus is a savior. 
You know what I'm saying? Pastor Tony knows what's up. You know, I've lived that life. I know what the deal is. So all my brothers and sisters out here, when you look at me, I know you're thinking to yourself, him? Yeah, me. Yeah, me. That's what I've lived this life. I know what's going on with it. All of us, we've been. That's what Gary, myself, Gregory, everybody that's around here, we've all spent our time out there in the midst of all this madness. Amen? Amen. So we know what the deal is. And that's one of the things I'm proud of the most, is that when it comes to this church, our ministers here, we know what's happening. Amen? So before I start this sermon, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for getting us all up this morning and bringing us down here to church so that we can worship together, Lord, so that we can take in and hear what your word has to say about Walking the talk. Walking the talk. Lord, we pray that you not only bring us down here to hear it, but help us to put it into action. Yes, Lord, yes, yes. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you. To be faithful. And talk it, but walk it at the same time. Let everybody see us doing what the Lord Jesus has instructed us to do. So thank you, Father. Thank you for bringing us down here. Thank you for your, your loving kindness. Thank you for the strength that you're going to embolden us with as we learn what we're talking about here today. So we thank you, Lord, and we ask all of these things in Jesus', Jesus. precious name. Amen. Amen. There you go. Amen. Thank you. You must walk the talk. Amen. I got my beloved sister here today. I caught her on the way by. I said, I'm going to kidnap you and bring you in here. <laughs> it's good. I got this one over here too. Same thing. You must walk the talk. My focus statement of the day is that people are watching. Yes, they are. How will you introduce yourself? That's a question. How will you introduce yourself? My function statement is introduce yourself. By what is written in your heart. That's it. By the Spirit of God. And not by what you just say. It's very easy. We can, we can say whatever we want to about ourselves, can't we? Yes, we can. And say whatever we want. Try and build ourselves up. You know, oh yeah, I, I got it going on. I love the Lord. Da 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 da. Uh, but I got to go down to Fifth of San Julian for a minute. Hold tight. I'm going to go down there and get something to lift your spirit, man. You better check yourself. Wreck yourself. That's right. So, obedience is something that does not come easy to any of us. Isn't that true? It just doesn't come easy to any of us. There are so many things that influence how we feel about someone telling us what to do. I don't like, you know, I've always been a person, I don't like somebody stepping up and telling me what to do. Especially if you don't know as much as I do. You know, what's going on with that? When someone places their, themselves above everybody else and they assume that he or she is the alpha dog, the alpha dog. you know what I mean, the alpha dog, they begin to issue orders and expect everybody else to follow them. I remember one time I got, they put me in jail down in San Diego. I walked in there and the place was full. You know, they had a whole, a whole floor filled with cots, bunk beds. And then they had, you know, some brothers over here, some white folks over here, and some Mexicans over here. I, I stepped up and went in there, and, and this brother started issuing orders to me like I was part of his posse or something. And I looked at him and I went, who is you? I said, man, I don't play that. I said, I'm not in no gang, don't want to be in no gang, and I'm not going to subject myself to you. Went and found me a bed, and I found out that I had to sleep with my tennis shoes under my head. You know, because did they get yours? Yeah? Girl, I told you to watch out for them PF flyers. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? But you guys got to watch out. We got to watch out for all that stuff. Watch over yourself. Make sure that you're okay. But I'm going to tell you something. That begins to rub people wrong, the wrong way, because we immediately begin to think, to ourselves, 
Well, why do they think? Or who do they think they are? You know, somebody's trying to tell you what to do. What makes them think that they're better than everybody else? You know, I looked at that dude, man. He was just a little old tiny dude, too. You know, he a little old tiny dude. I'm thinking, now, why would he think that he got the power to, to just tell everybody what to do? Maybe he was bad out on the street, but you ain't that bad up in here. You know, you ain't that bad up in here. I'm, you know, you'd be thinking, who died and made you king? You know, and then, then we begin to compare ourselves to other people, and we quickly come to the conclusion that we're just as good as they are. It's easy to figure it out. We're just as intelligent or talented as they are. We might also think to ourselves that we're just as strong as they are. Amen? You can't take me. It's kind of funny. I had a friend of mine used to ride motorcycles with. He was a, he was a white guy named uh, Wynn Thompson. And when he did some time for, uh, shot a guy in the chest because the guy ripped him off. Well, they gave him 12 years. So he went to prison, and when they went out on the yard, he walked across the yard over by the bleachers, and wasn't nobody sitting out there but the brothers. They had all the brothers sitting over here, and he walked over, went to the other side right over here, and sat by himself. He was the only white guy. So right then this Brother Little Short, another one of these little short brothers that thought he ran everything. He comes walking over to win. When Win is sitting there and he says, My name is Demon. I call the shots for all the brothers over here. And Win looked at him and he goes, My name is Win. I call all the shots for all the brothers, for all the white people over here. He was the only one. <laughs> he, was making a, he was making a statement. Like, I'm just by myself, man, and I ain't trying to cause no trouble. They left him alone. Everything turned out to be okay. But, you know, sometimes, you know, we can think to ourselves, we're just as intelligent and, and uh, talented as, as anybody else. We might also even think to ourselves that we're just as strong as they are. So why should I humble myself under the pers this person's leadership? Why should I do that? Thinking to yourself that, that they're no better than we are. You know, I've had a lot of brothers come and tell me stories of when they was in the joint. The first thing they had to do is choose the side because a riot broke out. And if a riot breaks out, you got to pick a side. Where, where are you at? You know. In fact, who's it? I think my brother over here, Gregory, told me that that's the way it'd be, huh, Gregory? Yeah. But the thing that we should be considering is not how strong we are, or smart we are, or even how good we think we are. Amen. But we need to consider how the others got there. How did that little short guy get to where he's at? How did he end up running the show for, or calling the shots? How they became the leaders that they are? Because it's not good enough for you to stand up there and proclaim how intelligent you are trying to take over any leadership. Don't listen to this little brother. I'm smarter. No, that ain't going to get it. What's going to get it? Can you whoop him? You know, and take the leadership. Is that the way it goes? You know, that's one of the things that comes up. How and see, you might think that you know how intelligent you are, but there's a lot of people out there that probably are more intelligent than you are. Maybe people that went to school more than you did, or whatever the case may be. But it's just the way that it is. You got to figure that out, and you got to one thing you got to figure out is that it's not about intelligence, okay, to get you into that leadership might be how you handled yourself out on the street when you're fighting. Or how you handled yourself on the street if you had a gun and you're shooting up folks. You know? Oh, yeah. So, or you might think, even if it isn't have anything to do with intelligence, how talented you are. Look, that don't matter in prison. Ain't nobody going to ask you to get up and do a soft shoe. You know what I mean? You're gonna, hey, can you dance? You can be leader. No, it ain't going to be that way. You know, it ain't going to be that way. So, 
It's not about talent. It's not about intelligence. All things are established by what is tried and true. You've got to remember that. In other words, it's not enough for us to just say who or what we are. That isn't enough. But we must show others what and who we are by what we do. The things that we actually do. The way to truly introduce yourself to others. This church here, I'm your pastor. But I'll prove, I'm, I'm not going to just say that I'm your pastor. I'll prove that I'm your pastor by being there for you. You understand? You got any issues, any problems, whatever it is that's going on, you come see me. And if there's anything that I can do, I will do it. And if I can't do anything, I'll be there right with you, right by your side, while you go through whatever it is that you go through. And I'll help you. Amen? Amen. Why is it the reason that we got to do it like this? Let me tell you something. I do it because I know people are watching. People are watching. Is he really a pastor? Is he really any good? No. Watch me. It isn't about what I'm going to say to you. It's about what I'm going to do with you. Amen? Amen? Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 3. We're going to read 1 through 11. We're going to break Gary back in. <laughs> and here comes Gary. He, just, just, because he, yeah, just because he was in the hospital and it was not good, his voice is still nice and deep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, turn it on. Yeah, you got it? Testing. Number two. Testing. Testing. Yeah, there we you go. go. Whoa. <laughs> but Whoa. first, let me say first, glory to God who causes us to triumph and will cause us to triumph. You know, it's my, it's not, it's my belief that God allows things to happen. Amen. That we can come back and tell you that we can comfort you as God has comforted us. You know, as everyone know, I had surgery. It didn't seem like a surgery. I'm going to be honest with you. In my hosp hospital, you know, I, <laughs> it's amazing. There's no pain. There was blood loss, but the, 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 the doctor come out and shared with my wife. The surgery went well. I didn't lose much blood. and. Everything, but first let me say, I'm thankful to be standing here in the house of God today. Amen. But first I want to share with you. You know, as pastor, he said that though maybe some of you might be sick in here today, and you know, we don't know. But as a testimony, I stand here as a testimony. To what God can do. See, God is amazing. You know, as Pastor said, He's the pastor of the church, of the of the flock here, the church here. You know, and His love for all of you. But I want to express mine to you too, as as assistant to Him, because in my heart is the same way. You know, as both of you see me, as all of you see me standing here today, it's just as if nothing had took place. Amen. Just as, just as if nothing had took place. But let me share with you. God gave me an opportunity while I was in the hospital to get outside of myself even though I was going through something. And to be an encouragement and a joy to someone else. You know those nurses and things in that hospital, they work very long hours tiresome hours on the front line to bring care to all the patients there. But God gave me an opportunity to bring joy to everyone that stepped inside of my, that came inside where I was. Amen. They call me, when I left, their favorite patient, their favorite patient. Amen. Because I shared the love of Christ with them, I shared the love of God with them. There was a joy in my heart. Yes, Lord. But most of all, I'm thankful for my family. You know, here's uh, in this church. Let me be first to tell you how thankful I am. 
For all of your prayers, I want to thank all of you for your prayers because people have been praying all over. And I know for my church family has been doing the same because I got calls from people from my job and everything that's praying. But you know, most of all, I, I, I thank God for my family, you know, that came alongside when, the, when this time, this is a, important for all of us, what I'm fixing to say. See, it's not about what you say, it's about what you do. Boy, I want to thank God for my pastor, my brother, not only my pastor, my brother and my friend. That in this time, that that come right alongside of me, just as if it was, it was happening to him. Amen. I want to thank God for Brother Eugene, Amen. who came alongside. Yes, Lord. I want to thank God for my sister Shirley, yes, Lord. who come alongside. Most of all, I want to thank God for my brother Gregory, you know, when I was in the hospital and, I, and all this come about, I had time to think about it and I, and, and I thought about it and I thank God that through all that I've been through, through all that I've been, that in his mercy today, he shows his hand mighty through the people he has placed in my life. Amen. But most of all, I want to tell you, I thank God for my dear wife. Amen. Who is dearest of them all because you know it's in a time it touched my heart in a time like that that my wife was there and she's going through the same thing like she it's a part of her and you know I wasn't at home and she went home and the next morning she first thing she told me she said baby I couldn't even sleep all night long because you wasn't there Amen. I've never been away from my wife at home but one thing I want to comfort all of you with is this. In your affliction, in any affliction, because you know you might not be experiencing none today, but I say to you, keep living. But I want to encourage you to, in your affliction, get outside of yourself. Amen. And get, in, get invested in someone else. And watch God, what God will do. I stand here to testify to you. The, the joy that he brought me in that hospital. Look at, I stand before you like as if nothing. And this surgery was very, very delicate. It was. It was a very delicate surgery. He had to go into my bladder, my prostate, and everything. I thank God for my doctor, Dr. Johnson. Very experienced, loving, very experienced doctor. Very experienced, very caring, worked tirelessly. Yes, he does. That he placed me before him in his hands. Amen. But I don't want to seem like I'm preaching, but I have to say this and before I bring the, the word. that In my heart, it's in my heart that this church be built on these three principles. And I want everyone to hear me. Faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Faith is in, not our faith, it's in God's faithfulness. Our hope is because Christ died and rose on the third day. And love, which binds it all together in perfect unity. Don't care for yourself, only care for others. Put your heart out to others. Especially in the church. To love one another. Deeply from the heart, not just in words. To love one another deeply. I also want to thank God for my sister and my brother right there. By, they called out to me in their prayers and, and to check on me. You know, that's, that's important for all of us that we embrace because you never know. That's right. But show your love to one another while we are still here. Still here, yeah. 
It's not just coming to church. It's not just being in this building and saying, but you know, like Sister Lucy said, the building is not the church, it's the people. Let us act like the church. Amen. You know, I, yeah, I learned a lot. I want you to share with her I learned. I learned to get outside of myself, to die. If you don't die to yourself, nothing can live. Christ can't live and nothing. He's not going to share the throne with the little old me. He's going to be Lord of all, not Lord, not Lord at all. But don't think and, and depend upon good times because God, and it's not, God don't deal with us in good times because he can't deal with us in good times because if he deal with us in good times, we're going to forget him. It's in our afflictions. It's in the trials. Don't put your hope in your, to say, my, I'm blessed because I got material stuff. Amen. Don't put your hope in that stuff. You put your hope in the blesser. The, the blesser, that you got the blesser. Because when it's all said and done, you can have houses, you can have cars, you can have all, everything. But if you do not have Jesus with you in that coffin, you have nothing. Amen. So I thank God. I thank God to work things together. Pastor, this message. Don't just talk to talk. Walk it. Show your love for one another. That's right. In your afflictions, get outside of yourself and care for another. Be concerned for other people. Be concerned for those that are destitute and lost and those that are uh, in, in degradation. Be concerned for their soul, for the brothers and sisters that come in from the streets out, out there in Skid Row. Be concerned for their soul. Invest your life, your time into them. Don't just walk in this church and just like it's over. Take a minute and, and sit there beside somebody and ask them how they're doing. It's not, that's what it's all about here. And first thing, it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. It's all, it should be all about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let, me go I get, let me go ahead and read this before I get to preaching. But I'll save this for next week. Because by the grace of God, if God give me the strength and, and things to get past the break, I'll be bringing the word next week. Amen. Yeah, and maybe the week after that because he need a break. He's just a... Uh, just please yeah. stand to just the reading of the word of God. There we go. Is that 2 Corinthians chapter 3? Yep. Yeah, you had it on too. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 through 11. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, as some, letters of commendation to you or from you? You are a letter written in our hearts, known and read by all men, being manifested that you are a letter of Christ cared for by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence we have through Christ towards God. Not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant. Not, as, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death in letters engraved on stone came with glory, so that the sons of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face fading as it was, how will the ministry of the spirit fail to even more with glory? For if the ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. For indeed, what had glory in this case has no glory because of the glory that surpasses it. For if that which fades away with glory, much more that will remain is in glory. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. It works. You know, a lot of times we need to understand, you know, we, we can open our mouths and we can praise ourselves. We can lift ourselves up. Let everybody know who we are. 
You know I mean, I, I, do, I hear it be done every day. Somebody's lifting up themselves. But you know, we need to understand that that's not the way that you do it. You want to show somebody that you're real? Stand by their side. Be with them when they're going through hard times. Encourage them. And if you got a, a dollar in your pocket to help out the situation, give it to them. You know, it doesn't mean anything. It, it's the most wonderful feeling in the world to help support somebody goes through, going through whatever issues they're going through. Amen? So, what is this passage of Scripture talking about? Well, first of all, just like the Corinthian church, we should not be in the habit of commending ourselves. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm all that. And, you know, trying to, trying to act like you're bad. You know, that's the way that some of us, that's how we get sometimes. But boasting about who we think we are, why? Well, because we're never everything that we claim to be in the first place. We ain't never that. We're always trying to lift ourselves up. You know, there used to be a pastor here. This is years ago. I don't know if, I don't know if none of you, uh, I don't know if any of you remember uh, who it was. It was with, when Pastor Scott was here, and he had a, an assistant pastor with him. Um, what was his name? You remember... Uh, yeah, the associate pastor was Scott Ramsey. Pastor Ramsey. Pastor Ramsey was a trip. <laughs> pastor Ramsey was a trip. He stood up here one day, and he went like this. He said, "Yeah, <laughs> Pastor Ramsey." He said, "He said, I am so humble." <laughs> Now, if you got somebody up here talking about how humble they are, that's a problem. That's a problem, you know what I'm saying? He ain't humble. If you got to tell somebody you're humble, you ain't humble at all. You're trying, to, you're trying to get that for yourself. You know, that humility. Listen, humility doesn't come that way. If you think that you got to say to everybody that you got hum humility, you ain't got no humility. You're just patting yourself on the back. You're breaking your arm going like this, you know? That's what's going on. We build ourselves up to look so much better than we truly are. That's what happens. I remember when, uh, when Pastor Ramsey did that, nobody else, it, it seemed like nobody else was really looking. Nobody else was really watching. But you know what? That's been, that's been 15 years ago, and I remember that. I'll never forget that. That tripped me out. Now, how can you stand up in front of a room filled with people and tell them all how humble you are? There's something wrong there. There's something wrong. Anybody that you hear do that, you need to look at them and give them that look. You know, because something's up. You can't stand before a room full of people and toot your own horn. Okay? Anybody with good common sense is going to see what a farce you are. You can't pull the wool over everybody's eyes. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. People are going to realize what's going on. You can't tell them that lie. If you are truly a humble person, you will not feel the necessity to brag about how humble you are. Other people will be able to do it. Other people will notice you. If you are truly humble... Other people will see you, and they will talk about how humble you are. That's how you do it. You don't do it no other way. That's how true humility is recognized. Not from yourself, but from others. So, how does that happen? How do we acquire this true humility? How do we do it? Well, first of all, we need to come to the realization that we are not able to create these wonderful attributes within ourselves. You can't make yourself humble. Do you understand? You don't have the ability within yourself to do it. What this passage is saying is that even though the Ten Commandments that Moses received from God were written with glory in letters engraved in stone as full as full of, of glory as they were, even causing Moses' face to shine, 
that glory in time faded away. And this is the point that I pray that the Lord will open your heart so that you can receive this. I want you to understand this. What that says to me is that even though the Ten Commandments were perfect in every way, and they were perfect in every way, they were not able to make the changes in a man that was desired. They were not able to change a man. You could read them and say, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not, and, and, and remember them. But they were not able to change you, personally. Because it entailed Amen. them reading them and then making the changes himself. That's what it was going to take for you to be able to do it. And that was impossible for man to do. Man in his own power is not able to change himself for the good. We need to remember that. We can't change ourselves for the good. He is not able to meet the requirements of righteousness that God has placed upon man in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that, now doesn't that, that, that makes you feel real inadequate, doesn't it? I can't get into heaven the way I am. I helped that lady across the street. I carried them bags for so and so. Why can't I get in? That doesn't work that way, does it? It doesn't work that way. That's why this passage refers to the Ten Commandments as a ministry of death. It talks about them as a ministry of death. Why? Because even if you think that you're obeying the Ten Commandments, you ain't doing it good enough to make it. We will die in thinking that we're righteous enough because we do this or do that. Because it is the letter of the law. That's one thing about the Ten Commandments. We need to understand they are the letter of the law. In other words, here it is, written out for you. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt. That's the letter of the law. If you do these things, you will die. You will, that's because you sin. And what is sin? Sin brings forth death. So that's why it's a ministry of death. It's the letter of the law. So the letter of the law, what does it do? It kills. For if you are a violator of the law, and that is any part of the law, then you are a sinner. You are a sinner. And according to Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is what? Death. That's right. No man except Jesus Christ himself has been able to obey the law completely and perfectly. So that means that none of us stand before God justified. We're not justified. Not in and of, of ourselves. Deserving of heaven on our own. None of us are that way. So how does man enter the kingdom of heaven then? Well, the passage goes on to say that the ministry of death written on tablets as full of glory as it was, was fading away. When Moses came down off the mountain, he was in the presence of that when it was written. Man, that made that man glow. He was glowing like crazy, shining. He came down the mountain. People couldn't even gaze at him. He was shining so much. Amen? Shining so much. So how much more then will the ministry of the Spirit manifest itself in glory? Being written on what? On the hearts of men. The hearts of men. In other words, the glory of the written word on tablets or the ministry of death faded away in time. But the glory of the spirit that is written on the hearts of men is of greater glory. Enabling man to make the changes in his life that God requires. Why? Because the spirit is going to make the changes. He's going to make the changes in you. I'm going to tell you something. And, and when you, listen, when you experience the ministry or the Holy Spirit changing you, you're going to see it. You're going to feel it happening. You're going to feel, you might even run to the mirror and go like this. Look to see if you can see anything. What is God doing to me? You can feel him doing it. You can feel him doing it. And how does God write his law on the hearts of men? 
He does it through Jesus Christ our Lord. We need to understand what, what does it. How does it happen? One must be born again in order to have Christ in you, thereby manifesting the person of Christ in our lives and our behavior. Jesus is the one that does it. He's the one that writes it on your heart. He's the one that teaches you through the Holy Spirit. Amen? He's the one. It's such a wonderful thing that he does. He changes you just like that. We are not able to practice righteousness in and of ourselves by just trying to be obedient to what we read. Does that mean that you shouldn't try? No, no, no. You should try. You read something, try to let that change you. Read it, it tells you the way that you should be. Try to make the changes. The Holy Spirit will help you. Amen? So, we need to just keep trying to be obedient to what we read. It just doesn't happen, though, when we do it on our own. But we must have help from the one that makes it all possible. By not insisting that we make the changes by following what is written in ink on, by ourselves. Can't do it. You just can't do it. But by what the Spirit of God writes on our hearts. Making it part of us. See, that's the thing that you got to understand. Just writes these on your heart. It don't, it's not just something you can read on your heart. It becomes part of you. You understand? It is part of you. That's what makes it so important. God writes it on your heart. It doesn't fade. It doesn't wipe off. It's going to be with you always. Amen? Amen? When we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in our hearts, we make righteousness possible in our lives. Now, the wonderful thing about the entire transformation procedure is that although Christ makes it possible for us to change, it is obvious that none of us will have arrived on this side of heaven. No matter what it is and how righteous you try to become, no matter how righteous God makes you on this side and changes you, you're not going to make it. You have you're not arrived. You understand? We are still on this side of heaven. So the question is, what good is all of this changing for if it's not going to get us into heaven? Well, the answer to that question is, as we continue to grow and mature in Christ, we will become more and more like him. More and more like him. And even though we will never be as good as we should be, our lives will begin to show who and what we are made of. What we are made of. So in time, we will not have to try to convince people of who and what we are through convincing speech. But by what we do, we begin to be known by the content of our character. The content of our character. Instead of what we just tell people. We come to realize that it is not what we say that defines us, but what we do. Amen? Now, us becoming more and more like Christ definitely reveals who and what we truly are. Because what we are learning from his word, we are inculcating into our lives. We learn it from his word. So that means whatever, that's one of the reasons why it's so important for you to pick up your Bible every day and read it. Right. Even if all you read is a chapter, that's all you need. Read that chapter, let that chapter that what you read sink into you, and that is what makes you different. It begins to change you. Amen? It changes us for the better. But is that enough? To open the gates of heaven for us? No, it's not. That in itself is not enough. For Jesus says in Matthew 5, 20, he says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Your righteousness has got to be more than that. Amen? So what does that mean? Are we going to be 
able to surpass the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees? Are we going to be able to reach a level of righteousness on our own that will save us? Well, the answer to that question is no. Not in our own strength. Amen? Amen. Not in our own strength. Our righteousness, according to Isaiah 64, 6, is like a filthy rag. Think about that. I think about it sometimes on my best day. On my best day. Come on, let me help you cross the street. Come on. Let me pick up your groceries and bring them in there and put them on the porch. There you go. God bless you. That ain't enough. If I did that all the time, it ain't enough. You want to know why? It ain't because of what I've done. It's because of what I am. I am a sinful creature. It's inside me. I was born that way. And I will always be that way on this side of heaven. Amen? Our righteousness is tainted. It's tainted with what? Wrong motives. Wrong motives. Wrong mo yeah, okay, I help you with them groceries. <laughs> is that the way it is? I ain't even doing it for the right reason. Um, so, it's full of what? Self servitude. That's why Paul says in Philippians 3 9 that I would be found in him not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. That's what we need to have. And, and you know what? We need to understand something. The righteousness that we perform each and every day, we need to understand that God will put those things in your path. He will put it. He doesn't leave it up to you. Because you get, listen, I can walk along the street and I can see somebody fall out in front of me. My righteousness says, well, step around them because you got to be over such and such as house in a certain time. You know, we don't do the right thing. We don't do it right. See, that's why God brings these things and puts them in front of us so that what? We can perform them. And what happens is as we do them, he rewards us. He puts it in our account in heaven. Amen? That's the way that works. So, it's important for us to know that our salvation is not achieved from how good we think we are or how even how good we are. It is not procured through water baptism or any other showy display. It is accomplished by one thing and one thing only, and that is Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's it. You see, Jesus in his mercy, according to his riches, came to pay the price for our sin. Providing a way for us to surpass the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. He's the one that made a way for us to surpass, it, to surpass that righteousness. What Jesus does is he makes possible a trade. Yeah, an exchange. He trades something. Think about it. When, when we come to him and receive him to where he sets his throne up on our hearts, he trades his righteousness for our sin. Isn't that amazing? He comes in, he takes my sin, gets rid of it, the price is paid, and he gives me his righteousness. So I can look at you right now and I can go, yeah, I'm pretty righteous right now. But it ain't because of me. <laughs> Jesus is the one who did it. Amen? Amen? He takes away our sins and in return he gives us his righteousness so that when God looks at us, he doesn't see us in our own righteousness. He sees Christ's righteousness in us. Okay, which is perfect in every way and surpasses all of the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. That's how it's done. That's the trick. You know, I remember when I was younger, I couldn't figure it out. How does Jesus do this? How does this, how does this make sense? Didn't even make sense to me. 
But you know what? As I got older, God opened my heart, gave me the answer to those questions. So although none of us are worthy of everlasting life, his sacrifice has purchased it for us. Costing us what? Nothing. He didn't ask for no money out of our pockets. He didn't ask for no gold or diamonds or anything like that. He did it for nothing. So although none of us are worthy of everlasting life, his sacrifice has purchased it for us. Costing us nothing. It is free for the asking. All we have to do is put our faith in Christ and his finishing work. That's what we need to do. So we need to, one, we need to define ourselves by what we do and not by what we say. Okay? The first thing that we need to remember is to be aware of those who talk too much and too fast. A lot of people talking too much and too fast. Oh, yeah, they, they're trying to get, get it across to you. Oh, yes, I'm all that and a bag of Fritos. Number two, we need to remember that if we want someone to really know us, it is in our actions and not in our words. It's in our actions. We define ourselves by what we do, and then we don't have to talk about it. We need to remember that. That's the way we do it. And number three, we need to also realize that our competence and adequacy is not from us. I'm not adequate just because, yeah, just because I'm standing up here. I'm not adequate because of that. It's not from us, but it's from God. It is not from the letter, but from the Spirit that has lasting glory and does not fade away. That's where we get it from. All of us are worth so much, not because of us, but because... Of God and has done it in us. Amen? So as we reflect on the glory shown to us with Moses when he came down from the mountain after receiving the Ten Commandments, the glory was hidden from the people by a veil. By a veil. Remember, he had to put a veil over his face. Okay? And it was placed over his face so that they would not see it as it slowly faded away. God didn't want them to see it fade away. That same veil is now draped over the hearts of people whose minds are hardened. And even until this day at the reading of the Old Covenant, for those who do not believe in Jesus, that same veil remains unlifted. Unlifted. Because it is removed only in Christ. Only in Christ. Now, now let, me, let me share something with you. I read the Bible most often. I read scriptures that explained to me who Jesus was. But that veil was over my eyes. I read it over and over, but I couldn't understand it. I couldn't see it. Which means I couldn't believe it. When you think about it, it's a trip. And if there's anybody in here that's having a hard time believing in Jesus, that he is God and who he is, it's because that veil is over your eyes. It's draped over your face and you can't see it. You can't see it until God says so. And when he says it, guess what he does? He rips that veil from a, off your face and you will be able to see. Amen? I know this because that's exactly what he did to me. It was beautiful. What a wonderful thing. To know that God cared enough about me to come to me and to save me that way. Oh, man. He loved me, and I, and I could feel it. And now he knows that I love him to death, man. I love him to death. So whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. That's the way it works. And when the veil is taken away, we uphold as in a mirror 
we behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord as we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. We become more and more like Christ. So let us not introduce ourselves in word only, but with action that backs up those words, revealing the truth that Christ is in us and is working on our behalf, changing us by his power from glory to glory until his imminent return. Uh.